like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number six wants us to solve this quadratic equation. And your first reaction might be to set each one of these factors equal to negative 14 and solve them individually, because it kind of looks like it's already factored. But unfortunately, that only is going to work if it's equal to zero. So we've got to make this equal to zero and sort of refactor it. Uh, kind of annoying, but <laughs> that's just the, the way you got to do it. So I'm going to rewrite this uh, equation. 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 5 equals negative 14. So essentially what we have to do first is we've got to multiply the first binomial by the second one, and then we're going to move this negative 14 over to make it equal zero as well. So to multiply this out, we need to multiply each term in the first binomial by each term in the second binomial. Essentially, we're just using the distributive property on the first binomial uh, and distributing that to a, a each term in the second one. Sometimes you'll hear teachers call this um, foiling it out, uh, but that, that, that is what you're doing is using the distributive property. So we'll just multiply this one term at a time. So 2x times 3x is going to give me 6x squared. Uh, let's see. 6x squared. And then 2x times 5 will be 10x. Negative 3 times negative 3x will be negative 9x. And finally, negative 3 times positive 5 will be negative 15 equals negative 14. So from here, we want to combine our like terms, and we've got two like terms here. Okay. We also want to move this negative 14 over to the other side. We can do that by using the addition property of equality here. And we're going to add 14 to both sides. So I'm actually going to do kind of two steps in one here. Again, the first step, I'm going to combine my like terms. Negative 10x plus minus 9x. It's going to give me 1x. And then when I add 14 to both sides, that's going to change the ne negative 15 plus 14 right here is going to be negative 1. Okay, so this is our new equation here. Um, I mean, it's not, it's the same equation, but uh, it kind of looks a little different. And now it's equal to zero. So when we factor it, we'll be able to set each factor equal to zero and solve it kind of like we, you probably wanted to from the beginning. So to factor this, since the leading coefficient is not one, we're going to use a technique called factoring by grouping. And if you want more information and a more detailed breakdown on how factoring by grouping works, I would just go ahead and Google that and find a good YouTube video. Um, I'll kind of give you the highlights here, but I'm not going to break down the, the, the technique, um, you know, as much as maybe uh, uh, an initial lecture would. So the way this works is we're going to try to find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 6, which is the product of uh, 6 and negative 1. So the product needs to be... Uh, or I'll say needs to equal negative 6, and then the sum needs to equal positive 1, which is the, the coefficient of the linear term, right? Whenever there's not a number in front of a variable, we assume that coefficient to be 1. So we try to think of two numbers that sort of match this, and that would be negative 2 and 3. So we can rewrite this as this equation as 6x squared plus uh, 3x minus 2x minus 1. Okay, now and you can write it, um, the 3x and the negative 2x, they can go in either order. The order there doesn't really matter, but the point is here we are breaking down that middle term so that we can actually do the factoring by grouping step. So once you have that broken down, um, we're going to group the first two terms and the last two terms and factor out the GCF out of each one of those groups. So out of the first group, it looks like the GCF is going to be 3x. And when you're factoring out a GCF, you're essentially just doing the distributive property but in reverse. So you can always test to see if you did that right by multiplying whatever you factored out back in and, and verifying that that's what you started with. Uh, the GCF that we can divide out of the second group would be negative 1, which will leave me with 2x plus 1. At this point in the factoring by grouping technique, this is going to be like our little checkpoint here. 
and we want to verify that what's inside the parentheses is the same. Notice, yes, in fact, they are. So since those are the same, that is going to be one of our factors, 2x plus 1. And really what we're doing is we're just factoring that binomial out as a, sort of like its own GCF. Um, and then that leaves us with 3x minus 1 as the other factor. And now we've got a product of factors that equals 0, so we can actually use the zero product property. And so what the zero product property says is that if you've got two factors whose product is 0, at least one of the factors has to be 0. So it allows us to split this up and set each individual factor equal to 0, 2x plus 1 equals 0, and 3x minus 1 equals 0, and then we can solve these individually. So for the first one, I would subtract 1 from both sides and then divide both sides by 2, which would leave me with x equals negative 1 half. And then the, for the second factor, we would add 1 and then divide by 3, which would give me uh, x equals 1 third. So these would be the two solutions to the equation. Uh, you can always go back and plug these back into x and see that it is true. And let's make sure that <laughs> that is actually an answer choice here. Um, I see it right here. It's going to be choice A. Now, I will say as you're, as you're working through the CLEP, if you come up with a question like this, and let's just say you totally forget how to work this problem out, you forget how to factor, you know, you're just having that one of those days where you just can't seem to remember how to do a lot of things. Um, on this problem and on, on a lot of the problems on the CLEP, you can sort of reverse engineer the problem and use the answer choices to your advantage. So imagine if I didn't know how to do any of this algebra, um, but I see that these are my options for answer choices, I could just use the calculator. You're going to have access to a scientific calculator and substitute these numbers into x and just plug these in, type it in exactly how it looks, and see, does it equal negative 14 or not? Um, you'll find if you plug in one third here and here and you put all this stuff in the calculator, it should equal negative 14. Um, if you do the same thing with negative one-half, same deal. You should, if you multiply these together, get negative 14. Um, if you try that with any of these other numbers, it's not going to happen. So you don't necessarily need to know how to work it out, sort of the, what I call the right way. Um, you can also just use the answer choices to your advantage. Um, there's, no, there's no penalty on the CLEP for getting a wrong answer. Um, so you, it's sort of in your interest to sort of like try that, you know, if you don't know how to do it, and see if you can get it that way. Um, but that's it for number six. Uh, thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.